Hey everyone, I'm Ellen Jaffe Jones, and I want to talk to you today about three daily habits that can help you to age gracefully. I am 71, and most people give me a double take when I say that, and they're always asking me, like, well, how do you do what you do? And if you have followed me at all, you know that I have placed in 294 5K or longer races for my age group, and uh, running and a whole foods plant based diet is like the summary of what has, I believed, kept me younger than my years and has avoided premature death that has affected my siblings. And it really is the motivation for me not only to share this with my three daughters, but their entire generation to understand that things like diabetes and heart disease and all of the diseases of affluence do not determine our destiny. There is much you can do to change your destiny. But there are three habits that I do every day and I wanna share those with you because it is important to develop habits and make them a part of your routine so that you aren't struggling to try and come up with this and just know that it is implanted, it is, imprinted in your brain so that you don't even have to think about it because habits are, we are creatures of habits. Habit number one, mindful moving. By being in the moment, it allows you to focus on the present and tuning out the noise as best you can to focus on what it is you're doing. Now, if it's some form of exercise like walking, stretching, Tai Chi, that physical movement makes you focus on the parts of your body that are involved in the movement, whether it's, you know, Tai Chi or meditation, all of these activities, because they're physical, they at least attempt to take your mind off of whatever random thoughts might be running around in your brain. When you focus on these activities, it's really important to just try and as thoughts come into your brain, like we talk about in meditation, it's sort of like a, a movie, a movie where you're just watching it play along and you let it start, you let it finish, and then you come back to the present. So that's always the challenge of meditation and, and physical activity like walking, running, stretching, yoga, Tai Chi. These are all, if you will, pardon the, the use of the word, routines that we get into so that we focus on the physical and check out with the mental in terms of trying to leave whatever mental activity we are involved in behind so that we can enjoy the moment, live for the moment. There are all these phrases out there that have been used to try and get us to be mindful. And you know, mindful is a more commonly used buzzword these days, but really it is just focusing on the moment and trying to tune out the noise, all those phrases that we've heard in the past to try and just let it all go. And the whole purpose of this is to achieve a level of relaxation, even if you're running. I remember I just a few days ago got a new headset and it's called Shocks and it's sold by the store that I now work for, Fleet Feet, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But I had tried these headphones years ago and kind of wrote them off and I had been using my current earbuds, but I was finding in, in recent times that they were falling out of my ears when I was racing. It didn't used to happen, but for whatever reason, more sweat, humidity, because we have a global warming issue here in Florida as, as we do everywhere, but there's more humidity and that makes it challenging for these earbuds, even the ones that are more secure, to stay in your ear. When I went out for a run with these new headphones, it was amazing and I felt like I was relaxing like I used to do when I would run on my own and it really took me back to a time of euphoria and the ability to run because I'm so lucky that I still can. I've mentioned this before, I've taken the Dean Ornish class for reversing heart disease because of some genetic heart issues I have and I, I did ask that question, if you sweat, <laughs> is that still considered mindful exercise, mindful walking, mindful running? And they said no, if you sweat, it is not considered mindful because you are focusing so much on the physical activity. Now, you may disagree with that. I do a little bit myself because when I run, yes, my mind will wander, but that is when we have some of our most creative thoughts. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that for sure. Does it meet the definition of mindful? We can argue semantics, but I am very much in the moment, and maybe you experience this too. Let me know in the comments below of what for you is a mindful activity. Now, of course, there are books on mindful eating that makes you try and slow down the eating process because that's better for your health and your digestive system. And certainly, you definitely should do that. There are different ways of eating, like the macrobiotic diet, which is basically a vegan diet and can be veganized exclusively 
in if you follow that regimen but the whole idea there is that you chew each bite of food for 20 seconds and if you're not used to doing that it is a real art it is a real challenge and if you chew your food 20 times before you swallow it it will pretty much turn to sugar because that's what your digestive juices in your mouth definitely start trying to do but it's this whole process of mindful eating when you slow down the process whatever it is that brings you into the moment and even though you might have thoughts that come in and out of your brain it helps you to relax slow down your heartbeat which is good for relieving stress what's really important about all these activities is doing them consistently and it doesn't mean you do them every day a lot of people always ask me do you run every day and the answer is not anymore there's just not time and I also feel like there's just so much more going on in my life that I, I just don't have that kind of time and you have to decide for you what is the right amount of time for me it's about three or four times a week that I actually go running but I walk almost every day more than about a mile and a quarter with our princess here and just walking is a very good activity to drift into mindfulness if you can just let the stresses and the distractions of the day go behind. It is definitely an exercise to try with your brain as much as your body. Habit number two for aging gracefully is a healthful diet, nourishing with whole foods. So what does that look like? Eating foods in their natural state. What did Mother Nature really intend? It wasn't like uh, we had our ancient relatives stomping on olives trying to get the oil out. They were eating the whole olives. So think of a food in its natural state and that's really what you want to be eating. Of course, you all know that I'm vegan and I try and be as healthful as possible. That means foods, again, in their natural state. What did Mother Nature intend? That's going to mean roughly nine servings a day of fruits and vegetables and trying to keep them before they get squished into a juice. I'm not opposed to a smoothie because basically that's just rearranging the cells, but everything is still there. You're not taking anything out. The fiber is still there. We don't have a protein deficiency problem in Western culture. We have a fiber problem, a fiber deficiency. And again, as I've shared, I almost died of a colon blockage when I was 28 and doctors at that point said I would need to be on medication the rest of my life. And I thought, that's crazy. I'm too young to be on any kind of medication for the rest of my life. Ran to the health food store and read the few books on fiber that, that there were at the time. And that's how I self-educated and saw that there was such an incredible difference once I added another 20, 30, 40 grams of fiber into my diet. On the standard American diet, we're lucky to get 10 to 15 grams of fiber a day. On a whole foods vegan diet, we're getting upwards of 60 grams a day without even thinking about it. And you'll find that many of your problems like constipation and all the things that that leads to the toxins getting stuck in your body causing cancer those kinds of things just you'll see we can't say that fiber cures cancer but or prevents it but my mom and both sisters had breast cancer I'm the only adult female without and only 10% of all breast cancer cases are genetic so did I get all the good genes no there is much you can do to change your destiny. Don't think it's always about the genes. It is important that we get plant-based proteins and there are many kinds of lean proteins if you're looking for that kind of thing in a whole foods plant-based diet. So what does that mean? What does that look like? Of course beans. Now there's protein in everything. There's a gram of protein in a banana. You are not going to die of a protein deficiency, especially if you haven't visited the protein deficiency wing of your hospital lately. So protein is abundant in a whole foods plant-based diet and don't worry about being shortchanged in that area. So tofu, which is made from soybeans, minimally processed is what you're going to be looking for, is also an excellent source of protein and is abundant in the Asian diet and other different cultures where it's, it's not possible to get animal sources of protein or it's too expensive or maybe there's bird flu going around and they don't want to be eating chickens. I mean, there are all kinds of reasons not to, to eat or even expose yourself to animal-based proteins. The third habit to age gracefully and use a habit daily would be cultivating social connections. Now, how do we do this in a Zoom world where everybody since COVID is kind of afraid to go out? And of course, as I record this, there's yet another variation of COVID floating around the planet that we have to stress about. Well, I, I've taken this whole social connecting pretty personally because the way things have evolved, I was finding myself at home behind the computer and with Princess the dog and like being home with a two-year-old. And I, I knew that I needed to do some other things to get out of the house. And even though I work in real estate, it has some current challenges. And uh, so one of the things just to make money is I decided to kind of float my bio out there and lo and behold, 
at the, the largest running store in town hire me, Fleet Feet. And so I'm working part time. And what I'm finding is that people come into the store and they are floored that I'm working there. They either know me from my vegan work or they know me from the running community, which is very, very much alive here. But, you know, you only get to do a race once every week or two. So that's not a whole lot of social connecting. But it's really fascinating. I have run into all kinds of people who said, oh, you know, I went vegan because of you. And I didn't had no idea you lived in Sarasota. So it's this kind of thing where people have expressed such gratitude. And, you know, that's been helpful to me because as an author, as a as a recorder on YouTube, you don't get that kind of in-person connection with people. So I really do try and get out into the community when I can. And working in a place, even though I'm not making a whole lot of money, uh, I certainly am able to feed my running addiction. And because the price of races are going through the roof right now, it's a good way to be connected uh, with people who share the same goals and values. So I would encourage you to do something like that. And if you have some creative ways of how you are finding connections with people in a post-COVID world or maybe a current COVID world, please drop them in the comments before, uh, below. You know, Zoom only goes so far. And even though it has been a great way for us to stay connected, it's just not the same as being there in person. How do you maintain social connections with people? especially if you have a busy schedule. Now I have like two jobs, real estate and uh, working in a running store, which I really do love. I mean, they're actually paying me to watch videos about shoes and I get to meet shoe representatives and it changes so quickly, even though at one point before I wrote my fourth book, Vegan Fitness for Mortals, I worked in another shoe store, a running store, and you know they don't sell just shoes. It's all everything that has to do with running. So it helped me to get educated even more before I got ready to write that book on fitness. And Vegan Fitness for Mortals really was uh, the result of my work, not only as a runner, but just trying to figure out what is the truth about diet and exercise. So you can find a job like I have, and it's kind of rewarding to get paid even a little something for the expertise you may have. And feel free to share any ideas that you've been having lately, because so much of this is brainstorming with our community about what you think you might be good at and trying to imagine how that might play out in today's world. You might think, oh, um, that was 10 or 20 years ago. What could I possibly add to the running community, for example, that they don't already know? And you would be surprised. I mean, people look at longevity. If you have been able to survive in a sport or an activity, you do have something to bring to the table. So don't sell yourself short on that. Also check out meetup.com. There are all kinds of meetups. That is how I met my current boyfriend, 15 years younger than me. We had no idea we were not close in age until it was way too late, but we just assumed we were roughly about the same age. And you may find that that happens to you as well. But just getting involved in the different meetups, you can search by topic. Hopefully it's, it has something to do with veganism. That's how I have plugged into our local community. But there are all kinds of interests on meetup. You can meet up with sailing groups. You can meet up with different any different interests that you have. It is the positive connections that we make with people, just like petting an animal res results in endorphins and oxytocin, the positive feel-good hormones. And so it is with people. Some of us may joke that animals are better than people to connect with, and maybe that has been true in your life. I get it. There's, there's a lot of ugliness out there, but for our mental health and our physical health, because it is also you know, stress, as we've talked about in other videos, makes the heart constrict, makes all of our muscles tense up, including our heart. And so it's important to just try and find something to be happy about. I know it is challenging, but certainly connecting with animals, you know, go volunteer at your local animal shelter or humane society if people don't do it for you. But, and, and I do understand that, but just try and do something for yourself that may also benefit other people. And when you focus on the external, when you focus on other people or animals that need our help, it does take the focus on yourself and maybe obsessing about some of the negativity in our world away because we can tend to feel powerless about what's going on in the world today. But as I like to say, peace begins with our plates. And so finding a way to connect with other people, to give them, share them, share with them who you are and how it's benefited you, maybe not in the form of a lecture, but just being out there. As, as I mentioned, I started working at a running store and ran across someone this past week who came into the store who I didn't even know was living locally. But uh, a number of years ago when I was coaching for a local high school, she and another coach said some of the most hateful things that have ever been said about me on social media. And it was when the butter is back 
Time magazine cover came out, and they just not only made fun of me, but of vegans in general. And she came into the store the other day, and I just wanted to say, how's that butter diet working out for you? And, but of course, I kept my cool. And I think it is important to understand that you can only do so much in this world. And living by example, I know that when she came into the store and saw how fit I looked, that everything that I had ever said in our conversations, you know, without going into a lot of detail, that I live by example. And that is something I think you should do too. And if you've ever had a moment like that, please feel free to share in the comments about that as well. Because since I've told the story to a couple of my, my uh, close friends, they have shared some interesting stories like that. So sometimes you don't need to mouth off to somebody, <laughs> even though you might want to. But just living that example can be more, so much more powerful than words. Again, I just want to stress that it is important to be consistent if you would like to enjoy a better quality of life, one that is full of vitality and where you don't feel like you have to slow down. It's all about enjoying your life and hopefully it will play out in longevity, longer years that you can be around for maybe it's your family, your friends, or to support the causes that you are so passionate about. Keeping in mind mindful movement, nourishing your body with healthful whole foods and social connections, finding a way to be connected with whatever group of people, animals, or causes that are important to you that I believe are the three most critical tips in trying to maintain and foster a healthful, long, and happy life. You know, we say that a lot to people, live you know, best wishes for a long and happy, healthful life, but it does take some thinking about how you're going to put that into action. It's more than just a wish, but it's also important to remember that age is just a number. If you have found value in this, I hope you will like and subscribe down below and share your comments about what you think is important in living a long, happy, healthful life that is all focused on longevity and sharing with others. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Looking forward to hearing your comments and what you'd like to see me report on in the future. All right, everyone, gotta run.